will be number 446. Amazing Grace, number 446. <laughs> In 
baptism, the church received the sign of the cross, and you now share in Christ's victory over death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who alone are able to give life after death, free your servant Curtis from all sin, that he who believed in the resurrection of your Christ. May, when the day of resurrection comes, be united with you in glory. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for everything under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to sketch stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit have workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to mortals to be busy about. God has made everything appropriate to its time, but has put the timeless into their hearts so they cannot find out from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognized that there is nothing better than to rejoice and to do well during life. Moreover, that all can eat and drink and enjoy the good of their toil. This is the gift of God. I recognize that whatever God does will endure forever. There is not adding to it or taking from it. Thus has God done that he may be revered. What now is, has already been. What is to be, already is. God retrieves what has gone by. This is the word of the Lord.
baptized and received the gift of adoption. Adoption is the adoption papers are what we receive at baptism. When the water of life is not just biologically poured into the human body, given to the human body, 90 plus percent of the body is water. But when we're blessed with the waters of baptism, we walk where the divine have walked. We dive into the water that the divine has dove into. Jesus is baptized in the river Jordan, not because he needs it and because it changes him as the Son of God, but because he changes it. I was talking to a PhD in biology, a science professor, a number of years ago, and he was a Catholic, and he said, you know that every glass of water we drink has a molecule, statistically speaking, a molecule from the side of Christ, from the moment of his death, in it. The very water that we use that plant replenishes our fields, that flows through the tap, that gives us so many of the good things of life, was touched by the hand of God. So at the time of his baptism, Jesus walked with him. The time of his first communion, where Jesus gives him the body and blood, he walked with him. The time of his confirmation, the time of his wedding day, when he stood on the altar with his bride, Wendy, and made a promise before God himself that they kept. And Jesus walked with them in their, their covenant with each other, and then in the reality of their children and grandchildren friends and community, and in every committee meeting that he ever uh, went to, in every row that he ever plowed, in every seed that he ever planted, the good shepherd was with him, just as he's with all of us. There's a time for everything Ecclesiastes says, and there was a time, a moment, that Curtis celebrated, and I heard the family describe it last night, you saw it in the pictures, in Jesus' life. And it was when the Word of God, the Word of God, the Son, always existed as the divine Word, the inspired Word, written down in the Old Testament and then in the New. But when the Word, in that moment of history, became a light in Mary's womb and took on human flesh, human nature in the Incarnation. We celebrated at Christmas all of the Christmas trees that you see in those pictures all of the Christmases that he, that he planned and looked forward to with Wendy for the kids and grandkids. All of those moments, those family moments and memories that each of us, you and I, celebrate every year began at a moment in time 2,000 years ago when the Word became flesh. If you were to go to Nazareth and, and go into a celebration of the Word or celebration of Mass, the city of Nazareth in Israel and northern Israel north of the Sea of Galilee, there's a point in the Mass where it says, and the Word became flesh in this place. God took on human nature. The spark became Jesus Christ in Mary's womb. And the Good Shepherd then walked among us as our friend. We hear in the Gospel that Jesus' yoke is light and that He desires it for us. What does that mean? Well, we would all understand it. Our grandparents and great-grandparents would understand it in Western Minnesota. Because when, in, in the old world, when you make a yoke for your livestock, you take your team of horses or your team of oxen into the carpenter, and there'd be a beam of strong wood, maybe oak, maybe something else. And then that beam would be fitted and custom customized to the neck and shoulders of an individual animal. So that it didn't increase the labor on that animal, it increased the horsepower in that animal. It was custom fit so that it didn't wear and create sores on the shoulders or neck of that animal. So that it wasn't a less of a burden and increases the power and the joy that that animal has, especially as a member of a team. Perhaps you've seen the Budweiser horses in a Super Bowl commercial. Well, they've been into their, their saddle and everything about that setup and the harnessing and so forth has been custom made to the animal. When Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, he's saying that the yoke that God has created for us in this life and in the next is custom made. Every one of you has a 
mission and a purpose from God. No one in human history will ever be like you. No one will ever replicate you. No one will think the way that you think or do the things that you do. You've been blessed by God with a special, customized yoke, a mission in this life, just as Curtis was in his. And so, it reminds me of, speaking of Super Bowl commercials, of, of the 1978 speech that Paul Harvey gave at the FFA National Convention. It was God made farm. Now, I did a little backstory after the video was played last time, that beautiful reflection on our way of life. And it said that Paul Harvey didn't actually author that, that uh, reflection, that he received it anonymously in the mail. And he gives credit to that anonymous moment in 1986 LA Times article. And so he, he goes on and he delivers this speech, he modified it a little bit, this reflection on God made a farm was maybe one of the most powerful things that describes the and encompasses the reality of a way of life that Curtis and Wendy and their family uh, have experienced and now live. It moves one to tears, doesn't it? Because it's true, it resonates with our real experiences in everyday life. So, in the spirit of Paul Harvey and in the spirit of God made the farmer, in the spirit of Jesus the Good Shepherd, I offer these, you these words to close. And God said, I need a friend, a good man with a big heart, to turn practical wisdom, farm wisdom, into common sense DC policy, who loves the land, family and friends, colleagues and community as much as I do. And God gave her wishes. God said, I need a match for Wendy, a man, a husband for her, whose shoulders are big enough to be a father, to cradle and carry kids and grandkids, to love them like I do. And God made her actions. God said, I need a leader who can plow a field or pick up and a pen and write a speech, who listens a lot and speaks when it's needed, who smiles and nods like I do. And God created her actions. And God said, I need a friend, a good shepherd like my son. And so on July 3rd, God called Kurt Hitchens.
Thank you. 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your service and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. So we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. All are welcome to go to the burial in the cemetery. Those who wish to stay and go to the social hall uh, where there will be a dinner and luncheon immediately following. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Our closing hymn will be number 432. How great thou art. Number 432.